Do you know how many times I've scrambled the eggs into my carbonara? You alone in the kitchen, who's to see? I'm Savannah, this is Cleaver Cooking, and I'm gonna show you how carefree a carbonara can be. Let's get started. I've got an old pot of water coming up to a boil here, and we're just gonna add a few pinches of salt. Everyone's always so concerned with how much salt to put in their water. Just like, just put some in. We're gonna cook some bacon. Some people have a lot of opinions about what kind of cured meat you should use in carbonara. It's all fine, anything's fine. The very first time I was like, oh, carbonara. The recipe I'd found for it used pancetta and I was like, do I have to use pancetta? Could I use bacon? Would that be okay? It's fine, any cured meat is fine. I've just got like a half pound of chopped up bacon here. We're just gonna throw it in. Some nice thick cut bacon. I think it was on sale. I usually don't shell out for the good stuff, except on my birthday. Just get that going. It's like it gives me life. All right, so we're gonna crank this water up to a boil here. Um, I think peas and carbonara are really nice. You totally don't have to have them. You can also use freezer peas, but I had these nice sugar snap peas that I shelled out, and we got some some little ones and some big ones. And obviously those are not gonna cook at the same rate, so we just split them up. You can totally use freezer peas too, and that's fine. These peas are not as fresh as the farm peas I had last week, because normally what you can do is you can just snap the top and unzip this little tough zipper on the front. These are a little bit older, and so they're not unzipping very well. So I'm just gonna kinda crack them open, and then you look and see, and you're like, what size pea do I have? It's a big surprise every time, and kind of a gamble, and I think that's why it's so addicting. It's what keeps me going through like half a pound of peas. I'm like, what's it gonna be? Is it big or little? So these are kinda big, so we'll put them in the big pile. Then we'll save these, these are totally edible, for something else. You could also put just the whole pea in there, and that'd be fine, but you know what? We're not gonna do that today. I think little peas and carbonara are nice. So you need an ice bath, that's important, and we're gonna do our little peas first. And you just put them into a little fine mesh strainer here. These little ones are probably gonna take 30 seconds, and that's it. We're looking for a bright, vibrant green. We want them to be tender. In they go to the boiling water. I eh, probably shouldn't use a bacon spatula. Get in there. There is one big pea in there. It's gonna bother me. I got him out, but he fell on the floor. Pull him out and give one a squeeze. Oh, that's done. That's definitely done. So right into the ice bath to stop the cooking process. Everybody out. Come on. You just plunge that in. All right, those are chilling, and we're gonna do the big green peas. This could take up to two minutes. You know, depending on the pea size, 30 seconds to two minutes. It's exciting. Up with the peas, give them a squeeze. Ouch, it's not ready yet. Now, some of you might be thinking that carbonara is a little bit intimidating because some people are really pretentious about it, but it's really not. It's simple, but once you understand the technique, you're like, oh, okay, I could do that. You got it, it'll be great. Ow! This is why you wear pants when you cook. Don't overcook the peas. Now we have a vibrant green, they're tender, right into that ice bath. Woohoo! And just let them chill out. We're gonna turn this water back down to low, and I'm just gonna top it off here because we're gonna use the same water to cook our pasta in. I love it when life works out like that. Bacon's getting nice and brown and crispy. Ooh! Ooh, I think it's ready. Okay, we're gonna shut that off. Ooh, slotted spoon. This is always such a trial. I have the metal spoon against the cast iron. It's just like, once I bought a, um, oh, I don't know, like a nice, plastic slotted spoon, and then I melted it in the dishwasher seven days later. What can you do? This is still not working out, and I think I even lost a piece down the grate, which is a travesty. I'm just gonna drain most of... You just don't wanna take the fat with you, essentially. Don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of fat in this recipe later. Fat is a flavor carrier. Remember when there was a fat-free fat on everything? And that was like what women were expected to eat was fat-free, sugar-free, like bullshit. It's a load of crap. Okay, whoop. So just drain off this bacon fat, but don't wipe out your pan. We want some of that flavor. That is godly. This is amazing. Keep that. We'll save this for something else too. So now I'm gonna take all of our little peas here and pick all the ice cubes out um, and drain them into the same strainer. 
I love this recipe. I'm also gonna bring this water up to a boil. You would think that that is a low stakes game, but the peas like to stick to you while you're trying to get rid of the ice cubes. And we have a limited amount of peas that we are working with here. And I really do not want to break into the freezer peas. Don't smush them. Oh dear. Oh no. Stray ice cube, get rid of it. It's like the uncle no one invited to the family gathering that just comes in and ruins everything. That's not a lot of peas. That's maybe a hefty quarter cup of peas. And I would probably tell you to use a cup of freezer peas if you were doing that. This is what we have and it's gonna be great. We're gonna just roll with it. Plus there's a few on the counter here that I'm just gonna pick back up and put in. And that'll bulk it up just, just a little bit. All right, that water is almost up to a boil. And here's the deal with carbonara. I am always, always tempted to be like, I could just cook my pasta and then get the rest of everything ready and it'll be fine. No. Do not do it. The secret to carbonara is that um, we're gonna use a sauce of cream and egg yolks and cheese and salt. And you're gonna thicken it by the hot pasta. When it's perfectly cooked, you're gonna pull it right out of the water and we're gonna mix it with the sauce into the pan. However, if you cook your pasta off too quickly and then you've got it over in the colander, your sauce isn't ready and everything falls apart. And then it's not hot enough and so you turn the burner on under your sauce to try and thicken it. Scrambled egg, scrambled egg carbonara. We're not gonna do that today. So what we're gonna do, we'll just turn this water down just a wee bitsy. Let it hang out at a simmer there. Um, I have a half a cup of heavy cream. You can make carbonara with milk. You can actually make it with the pasta water. But um, we're gonna use heavy cream because it's delicious. I'm gonna pop this in the microwave just for like 12 seconds. We just want it warm to give the sauce a chance to thicken. We don't wanna boil it though. All right, so that was like 40 seconds and intervals of 10 seconds stirring in between. And now I've got six eggs and we are gonna separate them. We just want the yolks for this recipe. So I'm just gonna put my little egg whites in this little thing here. And you know, with your egg whites, what I like to do is I look at them and I say, oh, I can make a meringue with that. I could whip them into a frothy mass and stir them into granola for those nice crunchy granola clusters. But what is actually going to happen is that they're gonna sit in my fridge for seven days and then I'm probably gonna put them in the freezer and that's okay. Wow, these eggs suck. Oh no, now we've done it. Just go in gently, but with confidence. It's gonna be fine. Come on friend, yeah, we saved it. Look at that, but that's why we don't do it over here. Oh no, that was really impressive. I don't know how I did that. So we have five and a half egg yolks and that's gonna be fine. A little egg white got in there and I am so unconcerned about it. This is carefree carbonara. I am however gonna clean this up because if you've ever worked a breakfast line, you know the menace that is dried egg yolk. It's a horror. All right, so we're just gonna whisk up these eggs we're gonna temper in our warm cream so that we don't scramble them. Eggs will cook or thicken at 170 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and get them a jump start on their thickening process by warming them up now. Mm. A pinch of salt. And now we need about a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese. And all I had left were these Parmesan rinds in my freezer, but you know, when I got through these, I wasn't motivated enough to get the extra cheese off these rinds, but now I'm out of other options. And so the motivation is arrived. Here we go. There's like always more you could get off of a parm rind. You just have to want it badly enough. Oh, I'm so tired. We got up at like 6 a.m. today. So we went and hiked a mountain and it was an excellent reminder that I am not in hiking shape. The best part was I biffed it so hard on the way down. You know that move in hip hop where they like, they put their elbows down on the floor and their butt goes in the air and they have their like knee up on their elbow and they turn their face to the side. I did that, but unintentionally, I just kind of like face planted and I just like, I went down, my knees hit first and then the heavy backpack rocked me forward. My hands and my face went sideways and so my shoulder caught the brunt of it and I was like, boom! <sighs> and now I'm making carbonara and it's all gonna be okay. <laughs> Six miles of hiking and my arms are the thing that's tired. I don't know. All right, that's close to a half cup. Throw it in, stir it up. 
You just know that when you put egg yolks and cream and cheese together, it's not gonna be bad. Perhaps another pinch of salt, just a little one. Can always adjust later, but we want some salt in there. I think thyme and carbonara is really nice. You don't have to have it. You don't have to have half of this crap, but we're gonna, we're gonna utilize this. We're gonna use all of this because it's kind of going bad. So we're gonna use it. One of the first restaurants I worked at as a prep cook, we would make like, I was like 200 meatballs at a time and you had to pick 60 grams of thyme. And I looked up every single possible way there was to speed up that process, because that was my job, right? Was to make 200 meatballs. And I looked up like the herb strippers, I looked up like pulling the stock down through a mesh strainer. And what it really comes down to is there are no tricks. You just pull off as much of the herb as you can and leave behind as much of the stem as you can and it all works out. That's a lot of stem. My sous chef would be ashamed. The other thing is if you stick the thyme with the stems in it through the meat grinder with the meat, he doesn't know. Or she doesn't know. It was a he at that point. He had this long like beak nose and these big glasses and he was angry all the time. Which is understandable because most of the staff there was an absolute ass, but so Tony forgot to turn this camera on for the last bit, and you missed a whole bunch of stuff! You're killing me, Smalls. I'm kidding. All I did was throw the pasta in the boiling water with an extra pinch of salt, because I'm a line cook and you always add an extra pinch of salt. Um, and I finished chopping up my herbs. So we're just waiting for the pasta to finish cooking. It's nearly done. Get a little pinch, oh, nope, not quite there yet. Does anyone have a secondary use for this thing? Because it's really excellent for stirring your pasta, but aside from like exfoliation, like what do you use it for? Because it takes up space in my utensil jar and it only has one use. If you think you have a secondary use for this, drop it in the comments. I would legitimately love to know. Back to the herbs though. We've got thyme, we've got parsley. I didn't measure, I just used what I had. You could probably get away with half the amount of both of these herbs, but the thyme was on the edge of going bad and the parsley I just have a lot of, so we're gonna use it. It's never a bad thing to add more fresh herbs to your pasta. I think I want some fresh cracked pepper into my sauce as well. Totally optional. Sometimes I just like to put fresh cracked pepper on the top of the pasta at the end. It really just depends on the day for me. That's a lot, but I'm feeling pretty peppery. It's like the longest cooking fettuccine noodles in the history of ever. Ouch. 30 seconds out. By that I mean one minute, really. It's like a line cook's time. Chef's like, how long on four? We're like, 30 seconds! And you really mean like one and a half minutes, but you're not about to tell him that. You just gotta go with it. You're like, go, go, go. Okay, so now we have to be ready. This is the most crucial step in carbonara. We are a pan set here. We are not gonna turn the heat back on in this pan. That's what screws me every single time. Wait for it to finish. Wait for it. I knew I was gonna need that for something else. Okay, it's ready. Shut off the heat. We're just gonna come in here and scoop the pasta. Come everybody in, into the boat. Right into your saute pan with that yummy leftover bacon grease. Get the extras. Little pasta water comes with you, no problem. Okay, so into these hot noodles immediately. Give your sauce a stir. Slowly pour the egg yolk, cream, and cheese mixture and stir it in. The hot pasta is gonna thicken those egg yolks and should give us a beautifully creamy sauce. All that goodness out of there. It always looks a little runny at first, but have faith and don't turn on the burner. It kind of thickens up after it sits here for a second. Oh, yes. So while that's thickening, I'm gonna add like most of the thyme here. You know, we're gonna just use the parsley for garnish. Most of the bacon, we're saving a little bit of everything for garnish. Most of the peas. And just toss that in. Oh yeah. Ooh, mama, that's looking good. That is a thing of beauty. I give one noodle a taste, check for seasoning. Salt, always. All right, we gotta plate one up for presentation here. You could do the whole like two chopstick method and twirl it, but that's unnecessary in my opinion. Then you just grab the whole thing, give it a spin. So then we garnish with bacon. The rest of the peas. One more time. Do that stupid little salt trick thing. Stupid. And some parsley. 
Oh, right. Can't forget the form. All right, y'all, that's Carefree Carbonara. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, hit that subscribe button for me and hit the like button and ring the bell if you also are a restaurant rat and kind of miss your sous chef, even though he's an asshole. Enjoy. <laughs>